Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode on the Always Radiant Skin Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel, a humble human on a mission here to help you achieve and receive the best hair, skin, nails of your life, slow cellular aging, and have beautiful radiant energy. I had a recent conversation with Christine on Instagram and she requested an episode on central nervous system regulation tips. This is really important for the skin because the brain, hello, is the master control center for everything else that happens in the body, from peptide formation, from neurotransmitter formation, hormones, and everything else that happens in between. Now, when it comes to regulating your nervous system, This is more important than ever to learn how to master and integrate into your everyday life for having always radiant and resilient skin as well as having a highly resilient body. We're all going to be experiencing challenges in our lives and what I want you to do is reframe those challenges into obstacles. I want you to become a version of yourself today, today better than you were yesterday and tomorrow even better than you were today, to be an obstacle course of life master. And one of the best ways that we can do this and step into this type of being a radiant person is to have a dialed in brain and master your central nervous system. So one of my top tips for central nervous system dysregulation, something that's free that you can start to do now is cold therapy. I spent about three or four years doing cold therapy a couple of times a week. We're talking getting into the Canadian ocean or an ice bath for about eight minutes up to my neck. I had to do this for pain after being in a pretty rough car crash that resulted in really bad whiplash and it rocked my head. And I noticed that I was more sensitive to sounds, vibrations, interruptions. I didn't have the same type of mental clarity that I do now, especially if you listen to past episodes on the show, I had a little bit more difficulty with recall and forming coherent sentences and even communication. So central nervous system Mastery will not only improve your hair, skin, nails, slow aging, it will also help to improve your communication with yourself and people you love the most. So number one, cold therapy. If you can start with a cold shower even, that's great. End your shower with about a one to three minute blast with cold water is excellent. Next up, I wanna talk about purification. Purification is so key. We're talking priestess style purification here to have the best hair skin nails of your life reduce cellular aging reduce things like skin sensitivities skin redness the amount of acne you might experience the amount of pigmentation melasma you might experience or even things like eczema and psoriasis can pop up if we're a little too stressed out and our toxic bucket is too full and i talk about this concept the oxidative stress status which in layman's terms, I like to term it the toxic bucket theory. When your body is full of toxins and this toxic bucket is too full, what's gonna happen, that bucket will tip over and then you're going to experience things like central nervous system dysregulation, you're gonna feel more stressed out. You at that point might start to experience more breakouts, pigmentation, changes in your skin with collagen, elastin, more sagging to the skin redness and darkness and puffiness to the eyes as well are some of the overt signs that your skin is trying to tell you that your toxic bucket is too full. What are the top five strategies that I have that keep your toxic bucket as empty as possible? Purification of your air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and regular detoxing. These will all help your body's oxidative stress status to go down. This is the one status in the body that we want to reduce and get this bucket as empty as possible. One of the things I discussed in my recent article on oxidative stress through environmental toxins and how it impacts the skin is to actually do these things before undergoing rejuvenation. Why? I noticed a long time ago, back in 2017, a number of my clients that were biohackers 
and that lived very balanced lifestyles, had body, mind, spirit, energy practices, and they they presented themselves to me in their 40s, 50s, 60s, all the way up to their 90s, and they said, Rachel, I feel great on the inside, I just feel like my outsides don't match. These are the subset of clients that I talk about in my ebook, Unlocking Your Vitality. And I started to take notes out of their playbook. And now what I've done in this recent paper is create awareness that if you want to receive the most powerful skin and rejuvenation outcomes, reducing this toxic bucket first will allow your body to heal faster. And then also your body will make better forms of collagen and elastin. There's many different types of collagen. I believe there's about 16. Don't quote me on that, but there's numerous types of collagen that can be formed in the body. Starting with your air. Air purification is a must. Be sure to check out my favorites page slash biohacking page on my main website over at rachelvarga.ca. Air purification is absolutely key. When debris, pollution, and heavy metals, the number one way our body gets an accumulation of heavy metals is actually through the air, through emissions and all other sorts of things that are floating around in our air these days. We have more environmental toxic exposure than ever before. And the the countrywide statistics show this uh, from Stats Canada, actually. I looked at the 2019 to 2020 mortality rates by type, and there was one section, death of unknown cause doubled, in 2019 to 2020 compared to the years before. Now, as a researcher, what does this mean? This is considered a signal. We need to pay attention to this. What does a signal mean? Our environment is more toxic than ever. Air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and also our foods. Air purification in your bedroom, in your main living space are key, and I have two of my top air purification products on my favorites page that I personally use. There's about seven different types of air purification from carbon filters to HEPA filters to UV catalytic filters that actually can kill viruses, bacteria in the air. Just assume your home has mold. Most homes have mold. And when mold, pollutants, and debris and heavy metals rest on the skin, guess what happens? It creates oxidative stress on the skin itself. That's why air purification and cleansing the skin in the AM and a double cleanse in the PM are critical to get off the particulates in the air from resting on the skin. Next up is water. Always drinking reverse osmosis water. The cleanest type of water that you can consume is going to be distilled water. However, for home use, countertop use, under the sink, whole home filtrations, and shower filtrations, Reverse osmosis is a little bit more easier, more easy to achieve. And then of course you do wanna remineralize your water. I'm a huge fan of the Organifi Superfood Powder Juice Blends. They also even have a unflavored collagen, which I'm a huge fan of, and I even put that in my coffee every AM. So purifying your water for bathing, I have a great shower head recommendation that you can start to wash your face with, your whole body, wash your hair with. And if anytime you're making coffees or teas, you want to be using the reverse osmosis purified water and not using any plastic coffee makers or plastic kettles. Go for a glass or stainless steel kettle and go for a glass or stainless steel French press to make your coffees and your teas and all of that. It's really important even for cooking and all of that. Make sure that you are only consuming purified water. If you're out and about, avoid drinking out of plastic bottles because of the phthalates in plastic. Not to mention in my research, I learned that in the water piping, there's a lot of phthalates, PVC piping, and those pipes never get cleaned. So biofilms and all of those types of things accumulate in the piping that goes from the water treatment plant to your home. Think about it for a second. Those pipes are underground. Do you think they ever get cleaned out? No, they do not. So reducing your exposure to various things that are added into the water to kill bacteria and things like that, as well as other things from the air that actually fall by gravity and enter into the water supply is really important. So always purified water when you're out and about, go for a glass bottle, Pellegrino for example, that's mineralized. And two other things you can do to your water to enhance it is structure your water with say the Somavetic device that I have on my biohacking favorites page. 
water in nature is already structured and that's what's actually in our body. So when we're consuming unstructured water, the body actually has to make it bioavailable and then structure. It's a really interesting concept. The other thing you can do to your water is hydrogenize it and actually get hydrogen gas in your water. What this does to your water is it transforms your water from simply hydrating you to actually becoming an antioxidant. This is incredible. So what, what you can do if you're an extra keener biohacker is take mineral water and then put it in your hydrogen flask. And I do have a hydrogen flask that I personally use. I use mineralized hydrogen water when I did a five to seven day long fast last year. Doing a long fast once a week, once a year actually, is excellent at trimming out those cells in the body that are called senolytics, senescent cells. You can take senolytics to help to prune out those cells that no longer function, or you can achieve autophagy through intermittent fasting or once a year doing a long fast. This, this reset my body in every way possible. Your body goes into the state where it just will trim out all these senescent cells. Think about senescent cells as basically leaves on a tree that are kind of brown and they need to be trimmed off because they're still pulling nutrients and minerals from the tree or from your body. So getting rid of those through autophagy, intermittent fasting, long fast, as well as taking senolytics can be really helpful and lots of antioxidants. And I have a number of excellent antioxidant options that you can find on my e-store. So antioxidants bind to reactive oxidative species, ROSs, that create free radicals. There are free radicals in the body and they're basically wanting to bind to this, that, and the other thing that it can and it can create inflammation. So purifying your water, you can also turn it into an antioxidant through hydrogenation as well. It uses a cathode to basically create hydrogen gas in the flask, it's really, really cool. Next up is lighting. So I have a really bright LED light in front of me. So what do I do all the time? You always see me wearing blue blocking glasses, are blue blockers, and the coating on prescription lenses is not adequate, okay? You can test actually blue light blocking glasses if you've bought some not so good ones online and you go to your microwave, which you should unplug when you're not using, and if you can still see the LEDs, that means that your blue blockers aren't working as well as they could. So there's a couple of brands that I love. I love the Viva Rays. I love the True Dark glasses. Those are all excellent options. And you can even get these ones in prescription if you just let the company know. You can find my top picks on my favorite biohacking page. The interesting thing about LED lights and central nervous system dysregulation, getting back to that, is LED lights actually interfere with our natural circadian rhythm. That's why if you're getting ready in the AM, you're doing your AM skincare, hair care, makeup routine, you're getting ready, try and get natural sunlight in your eyes in your restroom, try and get natural sunlight at the first part of the day, and then also do something called sun gazing at the end of the day to enhance your circadian rhythm so that you sleep better. Lighting like LEDs can irritate the central nervous system and actually keep you too wired, not to mention creates inflammation on the eyes itself. The eyes are the first area of the face to show signs of aging. They're also highly metabolic. And even my girlfriend, she's 44, she already needs to get cataract surgery. So I postulate we're going to be seeing cataract surgery needed in younger populations, as well as I also postulate that LEDs can result in hair loss simply because those LED lights that are everywhere these days, they're more economical, they use less energy, but they're really damaging and create oxidative stress on the skin. LEDs are just as damaging as the sun exposure you get outside, okay? So this is another way to reduce inflammation in the skin, on the body with your circadian rhythm to help to allow your central nervous system to be more regulated. Next up is electromagnetics. This is a big one. Electromagnetics are linked to being disruptive to the central nervous system. Why? Our bodies are highly electromagnetic. Everything from our mitochondria to peptide to neurotransmitter formation are mediated by electromagnetics, as well as our blood. So what EMFs are doing to the blood itself, we can actually see this in a live blood cell analysis, 
is you prick your blood, you prick your finger, you put it, you put a little bit of the blood on a slide and a practitioner looks at it under the microscope for you. If you were to compare what your blood looked like after not being on a device for about 45 minutes, you've been barefoot outside to naturally ground the body, you look at that under the microscope, your red blood cells are going to be more smooth looking and they're not gonna be clumping together. When we're on our phone for five minutes, what happens to the blood underneath the microscope is, and I talk about this in my research article, there's actually a change to the red blood cell itself. It goes from having this smooth lining to a jagged lining, and then these red blood cells start to clump up. And the issue that this poses for the brain is your blood supply isn't going to be flowing as freely to oxygenate your brain, all your other organs, and there's even research that I reference in my article that says that EMF exposure, electromagnetic radiation creates oxidative stress, skin redness, as well as ocular disturbances on the highly metabolic area of the eye. So you might experience more eye redness, itchiness, things like that. So if you're ever feeling like a little bit like jittery, you know, you've been working all day on your laptop, your phone, get outside, get some sunlight on your body and be barefoot outside. That's one of the best ways to ground the electromagnetics in your body and allow your blood to flow more freely. There are other things that you can do that are free to reduce your EMF exposure is to unplug your router at night. Um, don't use a cordless phone in the home. Go back to a wired phone. Keep your phone on airplane as often as you can. I actually keep mine in a Faraday pouch so that it's in when it's in my pocket or my handbag, it's not irradiating me. It's actually a pouch that's lined in silver. And I do uh, very often, pretty much every day and every night, wear silver clothing. You want to reduce your EMF exposure at every point during the day. However, we still have to live in modern society and use our technology like I'm using right now with the phone in front of me and my laptop recording this episode also. It's really important to start to learn how to shield yourself. And the best ways to shield yourself are with silver threaded clothing. So I have two brands of clothing that I personally wear. And the first night I slept in EMF clothing, I actually had 100% sleep score with the Aura Ring and then also on my eight sleep. So there are some technologies that allow you to track whether or not what you're doing or not is helping. So electromagnetic mitigation is really important for central nervous system dysregulation. When you're dysregulated, you're gonna be more stressed out, you're going to be more sensitive to sounds and vibrations, and just not be as cool, calm, and collected as you would like to be. Toxins are all contributing to central nervous system dysregulation. And this can take a couple of years to start to integrate all of these changes into your daily lifestyle practices. But once you do, you will start to see those differences in your brain function, as well as your hair, skin, and nails. So we've talked about air, water, lighting, electromagnetic mitigation and purification. Now I wanna talk about regular detoxing. So you've already done a great job with reducing the exposure to things in your air, water, lighting, and electromagnetics. Now it's time to detox. Taking a detoxing bath using Epsom salts, baking soda, borax, throw in some beautiful body oil that you'll find on my e-store skincare that I offer on my main website. You'll, you can find everything in link in bio and rachelbarga.ca. This is a great way to sweat in the tub and just your body's the largest organ. It's an excellent way to detox is to sweat. So have that bathtub as hot as you can stand it for about 20 minutes, get a good detox and then rinse off afterwards. Fill up your tub even with the purified shower head filter so that when you're detoxing, you're, you're actually detoxing with filtered water as well. Now the next way to detox is using a sauna. If you can get your own sauna, this is ideal so that you're not detoxing in a sauna that everybody else is using. And then you can actually use it more regularly, a couple of times a week. Now there's a couple of different options with different price points for sauna use. You can get you know, a big box type of sauna, have it in your home, have it outside, use that a couple times a day, or Sunlight, for example, makes some of my favorite ones. You can find that one on my favorites biohacking page too, as well as the higher dose sauna blanket. This one's really cool because it has an inner lining that you can launder and you can actually fold up the sauna blanket. It's kind of like a, a sleeping bag 
So if you're living in tight quarters, you can fold this up, slip it under the couch, slip it under the bed, and then use it when you need to. And your hair, your head sticks out so your hair and scalp won't get sweaty as well. So that's a great option as well. The third detox method to get these toxins out of your body is actually using an ionic foot bath. Ionic foot baths are really interesting and they use Tesla coils. So basically, uh, and I have my favorite one that I personally use on my favorites page as well, you have a box and then you have a little wrist strap and then you have also a band that goes around your waist which uses infrared light to help detox your organs and then you drop the Tesla coil in water that's about this high because the Tesla coil is about this high and you put your feet in this foot bath and then you want to line that tub with like a plastic liner of some sort, a garbage bag. I know I don't want to recommend that because it creates waste. However, the water that's going to come out of you is going to be very toxic and you use a little bit of salt in the water to keep the, the amplitude at a specific um, area so that a specific window and what that wrist strap is doing with the Tesla coil in the tub is it's putting a current through your body. And what this is doing is pulling out toxins, heavy metals, and cellular debris that really need to go. So we talked about the detox bath, we talked about the saunaing, and we talked about the ionic foot bath. So it's three really great ways to detox. The other detox strategy that I recommend doing about four times a year every season is clearing out things like yeast, fungi, mold, heavy metals, and parasites. We accumulate these things, women actually more than men, just because you know our physiology, we, we receive more, <laughs> more ways than one. And these are things that we can accumulate through foods we eat, through shaking hands, through exchanging breath, through being barefoot outside. They're simply things that can accumulate in the body. And when your oxidative stress status is a little full, it's going to be easier for these things to make a new home in your body. So what are the best ways to detox? I love the Organifi Superfood Adaptogen Blends that you can add to your filtered water. And you can find that on my favorites page as well. And as well as promo codes and things like that to save some money. And I'm really particular about the products that I suggest and the companies that I work with. I wanna know that these are good people <laughs> behind the product and also use them myself. So that's my pre-vetted list of basically home tools. And the other thing that you can do to detox is a highly alkaline diet. And our bodies can become a little too acidic with a lot of the foods that we have. Our foods aren't quite as nutrient dense as they once were also um, because of soil degradation, things like that. And stop eating prepackaged foods that are latent with canola oil. Toxic seed oils are known to create inflammation in the body. Same with using like Teflon pans, which are forever chemicals. We want to basically limit at every chance we can in our daily lifestyle practices to reduce the toxins in our toxic bucket. Be as pure as possible. Everything else will follow. Brain function, that extra bloating will start to go away. Your skin will become more clear. You'll actually recover and receive greater benefit from anything that you do for your skin especially with rejuvenation. So I love the idea of detoxing. And one of the things that I will share more of in a one-on-one -on -one session are the specific detox protocols that I personally use that, you know, I'm not gonna share publicly. There's a lot of things here that can be really helpful that isn't for everybody, or it's just, you know, something we'll get into more detail depending on what your values are, your budget, your lifestyle, what's important to you, what you can actually integrate in your lifestyle as well. And then of course, the skincare and beauty care products. You want to use non-toxic products that are free of parabens, solids, sulfates, artificial dyes and fragrances, everything from your skincare to your makeup, to your hair care, to your deodorant, your body washes, your nail polishes, and doing regular detoxing practices and basically purify every aspect of your life so that you're not getting an accumulation of these different hormone disruptors. So simply setting yourself up for success is basically being as pure as possible in every single regard. The other thing with central nervous system regulation and tips that I can share with you are mindset related and word choice related and communication. 
being in a more positive emotional state will allow you to be in a more positive emotional state. And you have to really turn down that reptilian part of the brain that wants you to survive from that saber-toothed tiger, that wants you to be aware of all these different threats in the world. However, what that will do is it will make you age faster, it will dysregulate your nervous system, and we simply do not need to have that, that volume cranked up. We need to turn it way down, and we actually need to learn how to completely abolish negative emotions. Being in a more positive emotional state will allow you to be feeling more positive and essentially being in a more loving state. Then there's also the concept of, you know, the masculine, feminine uh, traits that can be supportive of this. And these are things that I do a much deeper dive on in my schoolofradiance.com, the schoolofradiance.com in particular. It's this mindset of how can we be energetic? How can we be positive? How can we be the most high vibrating versions of ourselves? You know, after doing the skincare stuff, after doing this detoxing stuff, what are the next layers to that? And it really comes down to being in a more positive emotional state. Having more positive thoughts are, it's not about putting your head in the sand or anything like that, but it's just at every point where you notice this thought loop of a negative emotional state or in conversation with others where you're hashing about this, that, the other thing that happened in the past or you're worrying about things in the future that you don't necessarily need to worry about, being in a more positive, present emotional state will actually allow you to have more friends. At the end of the day, we seek community. We are community-based beings. That is how humans thrive, is in community with others and feeling loved and feeling safe. And when your nervous system is more regulated, you're going to be able to have better relationships with yourself and others and have more friends when you're positive. No one wants to hang out with a negative Nancy that's, you know, constantly worrying about this or stressed out about this. You're more likely to want to be friends with someone who's in a more positive emotional state. So this is where uh, personal dynamics comes into play, communication, the psychology, basically the operating system of being high vibe and radiant. This is all part of it. I don't expect you to employ these things overnight. It will take time. It's taken me a number of years to employ these things and I just give you the shortcuts. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed today's episode on the Always Radiant Skin Podcast. Be sure to check out the description of this episode for more ways that I can support you, as well as direct you to resources that I mentioned in today's show. And thank you so much, Christine, for this podcast topic request. How can we regulate our nervous system? And at the end of the day, it comes down to reducing your toxic exposure at every turn. And this also brings up the concept of healthy boundaries. It can be a little bit challenging at first, especially in a household, or you know, you're going out to someone's home to eat and things like that, to make great choices all the time. You know, we want to be able to be in the world, not of the world, and also live in moderation. So the the more empty your toxic bucket is, the more able you're going to be to you know have that treat or have that dish that someone created you for you that you know you wouldn't otherwise eat. And if you're looking for food recommendations, I love the Viome test kits. You can again find that on my favorites biohacking page. This is a really great sophisticated way to test instead of guess which types of foods are appropriate for your genes and your epigenetics. You don't need to do the food elimination diet or you know costly visits and things like that. This is a really inexpensive way for like $150 actually to figure out which foods are your superfoods, your, your minimized foods, and your enjoy foods, and your completely avoid foods. This will help you eat in a way that will be less likely to create inflammation. There's a lot of healthy foods that I used to eat that were actually creating inflammation. They were healthy, but they weren't healthy for me. So looking at what you're eating, what you're drinking, as well as music and media that you are consuming, 
start to listen to the words of the music that you're listening to and do ensure that they are positive and that you're not contributing to negative emotional programming as well. That's a really important tip. And when you are consuming content from someone online, I want you to take a good look at their eyes. Do they have brightness? Do they have radiance? Do they have clarity? They're kind of just like dull, flat like this. I see this a lot on YouTube with different skin influencers actually recommending totally toxic products and chemical sunscreens that are just awful. And you really wanna pay attention to who you're getting information from, the vibe that they're giving off. Are they basically giving you an example of what you are looking to also achieve as well? So I'm not for everybody. I recognize that uh, the, this, all of these steps do take work to balance your nervous system. It's not, you know, a one hit wonder, you know, quick fix. It takes time. And as you know, this isn't medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. Have a lovely day, everyone. And I will see you again right here on the Always Radiant Skin Podcast.